So in spite of the good charitable work that the Clinton Foundation actually does time and again, well, it is the case that it is a very corrupt foundation because they engage in pay-to-play deals. When Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, donors to the Clinton Foundation asked her for favors, and we know on various occasions she actually delivered. So with the release of John Podesta's emails by WikiLeaks, we have more evidence of a quid pro quo going on. So Zero Hedge explains, Ira Magaziner, who is vice chairman and CEO of the Clinton Health Access Initiative, sent an email to John Podesta and Amitab Desai, director of foreign policy at the Clinton Foundation, in which he said that Chai, the Clinton Health Access Initiative, would like to request that President Clinton call Sheikh Mohammed to thank him for offering his plane to the conference in Ethiopia and expressing regrets that President Clinton's schedule does not permit him to attend the conference. Now just to reiterate here, this individual is a major donor to the Clinton Health Access Initiative and they emailed people within Clinton's campaign and at the Clinton Foundation and asked for this favor. They wanted Bill Clinton to do this. And here's what Amitab Desai of the Clinton Foundation said in response. Unless Sheikh Mohammed has sent us a six million check, this sounds crazy to do. Now, Clinton's former chief advisor, Doug Ban, chimed in and said, if he doesn't do it, Chai will say he didn't give the money because of WJC. And Podesta agreed, saying, I agree with Doug, and this seems rather easy and harmless and not a big time sink. So if you're taken aback by the fact that the director of foreign policy at the Clinton Foundation would instinctively reply by saying, you want a favor? Where's the money? Well, then you should be, because there's two very big implications about this. Well, one, it might be how the Clinton Foundation usually does business, and two, if they're asking for money in exchange for favors here, they probably did this before. And evidence indicates that this is, in fact, the case. Now, these emails also show that Chelsea Clinton, to my surprise, was concerned about the perception of corruption between the Clinton Foundation and their donors and the Clinton Foundation and the State Department, and that she actually voiced her concerns about it to people within uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's camp. So Politico explains, Chelsea Clinton flagged serious concerns about her father's closest aides trying to cash in by using the former president's name to gain access to government officials on behalf of paying clients, according to emails released this week. Teneo, in particular, did lucrative work for foundation donors and entities with business before Clinton's State Department, and it signed a contract reportedly worth $3.5 million with Bill Clinton to serve as an advisor, though the former president ultimately kept only 100000 of that according to his tax returns and a source familiar with the arrangement. Teneo also paid Uma Abedin, Hillary Clinton's right-hand woman at the State Department, as a senior advisor. One of the pair of Clintonites who founded Teneo, Declan Kelly, was working for Clinton State Department while laying the groundwork for the firm, as revealed by Politico. Politico also exposed that the other Teneo founder, longtime Bill Clinton aide Doug Band, was drawing salaries from both the Clinton Foundation and the former president's taxpayer-subsidized personal office, while another early Teneo official, Justin Cooper, was being paid by the Clinton's taxpayer-funded office, even as he was performing maintenance on Hillary. Hillary Clinton's controversial private email server. In December 2011, Chelsea Clinton sent a sharply worded email to top family confidants saying that people in London had raised serious concerns about the way Teneo was using her father's name to set up meetings for clients, according to private emails released by WikiLeaks. I will raise all of this and more with my father this evening, she wrote. Wanted to update you all in the meanwhile about my augmented concerns post-London. At the time, Chelsea Clinton had already been pushing to enact tougher rules at the foundation regarding conflicts of interest and outside income. In response, Band blasted her behind her back as an irrational ingrate who runs to daddy to change a decision or interject herself in the process. In the emails released by WikiLeaks on Monday and Tuesday, Ban dismissed Clinton as an entitled and power-hungry young woman who wreaked havoc at the Clinton Foundation and who created a stressful environment that contributed to one person's contemplating suicide simply because she was bored and protective of her relationship with her father. She's acting like a spoiled brat kid who has nothing else to do but create issues to justify what she's doing because she, as she has said, hasn't found her way and has a lack of focus in her life. Ban wrote in a November 2011 email to longtime Clinton family advisor John Podesta. Now, John Podesta indicated that Doug Ban should not try to get into a fight with Chelsea Clinton. Now, after reading all that, my only response is, wow. 
So we have several things going on here. They're really angry about the fact that Chelsea Clinton has the audacity to bring up the perception of corruption that's very evident to people who are just normal everyday citizens that see, hey, maybe this organization, the Clinton Foundation, is setting up a humongous conflict of interest between the Clinton State Department and the Clinton Foundation. Maybe, just maybe, we should look into this. So how dare she do that? But also, this has a lot to say about Chelsea Clinton, because apparently she ran the organization or helped run the organization in a manner that was so bad that it created an environment where someone actually contemplated suicide. Jesus. I don't know whose side to take here because I think that they're both making points that have at least some kernels of truth. I know that Chelsea Clinton, she's on the right side here by suggesting that this is a direct conflict of interest and that, you know, it looks really bad. It's not a good look because she knows her mom is going to run for president and all these deals and the connection between the Clinton Foundation and these private companies is clearly setting up a conflict of interest. So she's right to point that out. But the fact that Doug Band painted her to John Podesta as an ingrate, as a spoiled brat, is that truthful? I don't know, because I think that he probably has the sense that anything that Chelsea Clinton does that is obnoxious to him, he's going to paint her as the spoiled brat. So what we can take away from this is that if you try to call out corruption, people from within Clinton's campaign, longtime friends, longtime allies, are going to not only just downplay it, they're actually going to lash out at you, even if you're related to the Clintons, and say, hey, you don't like corruption? Shut up. That's basically what they're saying. So this is really startling because these people are still surrounding the Clintons. I mean, they still have their ears. So it's very troubling that people this complicit in corruption would be this angry when someone tries to point it out. <laughs>